Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Survival Guide. My name is Mage and today we're talking about the ghoul. I tried to record this video a few days ago on October 31st, but every year around the same time a bunch of zombies, monsters, and vampires all come to my house and I had to spend the past few days fighting them off. Anyway, today we're talking about the ghoul, which was originally an Arabian myth uh, that sort of came away into Europe as well as into modern times. For this discussion, there are different spellings of the ghoul. As far as I can tell, the Arabian is called this, and the European slash modern version is listed as this. And for the most part, I will let you all know when I'm talking about either one. Originating from Arabia, the ghoul was sort of a djinn-like creature, being related to jinns and genies. It acted as sort of a siren, being a lure and a trap for travelers. It was able to shapeshift into humanoids and animals, though not perfectly. I'll get into this later. The creature would use a friendly or beautiful face and would light a campfire to lure travelers away in the desert or in the woods, away into a false safety, where the ghoul would then kill and eat their prey. One, source, one particularly interesting source I saw was that the ghoul would actually take the guise of their recent victims. We've seen the sort of trope of an imposter being in sort of a group of people, and this is a really interesting conundrum for an adventuring party to solve. Shapeshifting to animals and people is one thing, but it being someone you know is a really interesting thing, and is actually quite dangerous. One particular saying this could happen is if an adventuring party encounters a ghoul, or at least one of them does. The ghoul would then take the guise of that one, either killing them or replacing them, and the adventuring party would be none the wiser. The ghoul could hinder or attack the party along the way, the adventuring party may not even knowing what's going on. I'll get into more details on how to combat this later on, but this is a really interesting thing. In addition to shapeshifting, they could also turn invisible, being related to the jinns and genies. For this research, I did take a look at jinns, genies, and the like, and as far as I could tell, ghouls are all closely related to them. I did use my best judgment on deciding what aspects the jinns had that the ghoul would most likely also have. Specifically, the ghoul appears to be sort of a dark, evil version of the jinn, being some of the darker side of that whole thing. One of the aspects the ghoul would also have is the ability to inhabit a large variety of objects, such as rocks, trees, pots, etc. Citizens in the area and towns and such had to be very careful to avoid harming possible jinns and objects, being careful not to upset them. One of my favorite points about this is that one guy had to be very careful of not peeing in an alleyway or behind a tree to avoid peeing on a jinn. Not exactly the kind of position you want to be in upsetting a creature. Anglo slash European ghouls retain most of the Arabian ghouls' details, but emphasize the graveyard aspect. They would live and inhabit in graveyard cemeteries and any really places of death, and would exhume recently deceased bodies to consume the decaying flesh. It would also hunt children and lone citizens in the night. A really interesting detail I did find is that some ghouls would actually guard their graveyards against robbers or interferers. If there be some sort of graveyard or some narrow dweller uh, trying to harm a graveyard, the ghoul would actually come and attack that person or any sort of group trying to do that. This of course means to be opportunistic about someone trying to disturb their home and probably wouldn't be out of the goodness of their heart. One of the, one of the last details I want to talk with these specific ghouls is their connection to animals. They could shapeshift to animals and such, but apparently they would also ride hares and dogs across the desert. Occasionally, they would also kidnap livestock, cows, camels, etc., and would chase them or ride them to exhaustion until they died. This would definitely be a big frustration of farmers or any sort of person in the area who would rely on these animals. It would also be a really bad way to go for such poor animals. More modern varieties of the ghoul lack some of the details of its earlier cousins. For the most part, I would find that they would live in caves, subways, or any other spaces underground. These would also be changelings. The main difference between changelings and shapeshifters is actually how they would gain this power. Instead of being a true shapeshifter, ghouls would switch human babies with humanoid ghoul lookalikes that would eventually mature, mature into a full ghoul. There's quite a few mythical stories or creatures that would do this sort of thing, especially something like fae, or any sort of fairies or anything like that. One of my personal favorites is from the show Troll Hunters, which was a really interesting fantasy story that actually had quite a lot to do with chain leans and them being quite integral to the story. Now one detail I haven't really talked that apparently all the ghouls seem to have, though I did have some difficulty finding more details about this with the Arabian and the European ghouls. The ghouls would have some ability to travel dreams and sleep, either terrorizing or annoying people sleeping. There are a few more prominent stories that feature this, but this would be a really interesting and dangerous thing as in, if an adventurer can't sleep because they're being annoyed, they'll eventually get tired and slow down. Now, how would you actually fight a ghoul? 
there were quite a lot of variety of defenses an adventurer could actually use. How would you actually find the ghoul in the first place? Like I already said, there's shapeshifters, changelings, and actually finding out who's who could be really dangerous. The devil is quite literally in the details, recognizing things that are a bit off. One of the very important details I found in my research is that ghouls could not quite get it right. Uncanny Valley is a very powerful tool, and it's a really interesting fact that humans have this. For all the ghouls shapeshifting, they can't get them exactly right, retaining either animalistic features or just not quite getting all the features correct. One source that specifically Arabian ghouls always had donkey hoofprints left behind, betraying their ruse. These footprints would be easy enough to see in the desert, seeing the things left behind in the sand. But in the interior, you could also do this by spreading flour, salt, or sand on the floor to detect footprints. This would also be really good against any invisible enemies as well, which the ghoul also has that ability. Of course, probably the best thing you could do is just being wary of any suspicious figure or fire, anything that doesn't seem quite right in the distance. The ghoul would like campfires, acting like a safe place for travelers to come by. Uh, just be careful with that or just set up your own campfire and not really trust anything you don't see properly. Now, with an adventuring party, and if how one of you happens to be replaced, how would you find that if Uncanny Valley is not quite working? You could actually come up with quite a few body monkeys or past rises to discern imposters. Anything from certain marks in your body to just having a certain code word, uh, this would also help and would possibly avoid certain things happening between arguments or the wrong person getting hurt. Now for actual combat, as far as I can tell, ghouls would actually be quite comparable to humans in actual combat. Any sort of weapons would work, swords, axes, and bows, though for the most part, unless you were specifically hunting a ghoul, having something like a billhook, halberd, or even a really powerful whirlbow, this would not really be the most likely scenario most adventurers would encounter a ghoul. If you hunt to it, sure, you can prepare, but ghouls are tricksters, the shapeshifters, changelings, you would actually find them in alleyways or just as a friendly face in the desert. So for the most part, you would actually have sidearms or personal defense weapons against them. All of these would mostly work. Something like a side sword, a dagger, or maybe like an arming sword or hatchet would definitely work. As far as I can tell, I couldn't really find any source or any sort of proof that ghouls would use actual weapons as well, but I'm sure they would actually have the ability to. I also can't tell if they actually have stronger or enhanced abilities over humans. I would just take the safe route and assume so and just be extra careful. One, one source did particularly mention boiling water as an attack against the ghoul, though I feel this is just more like a general thing since boiling water could damage a whole lot of things. Now probably a very important detail that does need to be mentioned is that specifically, or at least mostly referencing the Arabian ghoul, I did find a source that talked about being wary about striking a ghoul far too much. Whenever you attack or defend yourself against a ghoul and you actually kill it, you have to be careful to not strike it after killing it, because apparently it would actually reawaken to attack you again. Well, this is a really cool and kind of dangerous idea uh, to use for any sort of variety of monsters of something that already dead, if hit again, brings it back to life. To be honest, all you have to do is just be really in control of your weapon, not swinging wildly, or just knowing when the ghoul is either dead or just pretending to. I'm not entirely sure what it counts as an attack to do this, if it's just doing any sort of damage or just disturbing the ghoul regardless. If stepping on them is okay, or perhaps just tripping and kicking them. Another interesting idea I had with this is in a battlefield. I'm quite sure ghouls would be attracted to battlefields, or any sort of thing where a large amount of dead bodies would be, either in the aftermath or during this. If the ghoul was shapeshifted and pretended to be an ally soldier, that would be a really dangerous thing, and might be a really cool plot hook for like a DD game, or any sort of story, or any sort of thing like that. And for the most part, I think we'd actually find ghouls a lot, because they would find easy prey in such a thing. Anyway, that's kind of all I found for this topic. I didn't find all the research I wanted to. It was really quite difficult to actually find this compared to all of my other essays. I want to thank you all for watching. If you have any, if you all have any extra sources or any other suggestions for the ghoul or any other sandy fantasy creature, object, or concept, please let me know down below. Thank you all for watching. And good luck on your adventure.